All right. We'll give a few minutes to see if anyone hops in. And then if not, we'll go ahead and get started and we'll act as if you have a full crowd. Well, we'll go ahead and get started since this is uh, being recorded. We can then utilize it for any of your students who hop on um, later on, but then also you can share it with any of your prospective students as well. So welcome to the virtual college exploration of the state of Indiana. Um, I am here to facilitate this conversation. Um, if you happen to have any questions whatsoever, use your Q&A button to type those in. Also note that your cameras and microphones are off. Um, so if you are asking any questions, make sure you type those in as the phones cannot see or hear you. You can sign up for more sessions um, by going to the website listed here on the slide, inacac.org forward slash virtual dash college dash exploration. Um, all the recordings will be available in case you missed a school or want to see another school um, that has pre that's presenting or any of the fun topics that we had earlier on in the weeks. Um, but I will turn it over to Southern Illinois University. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Cody Lennon. I'm an admissions coordinator here at Southern Illinois University, of course. Um, I actually am alumni from SIU. I graduated here in 2016 with a degree in outdoor recreation. Um, SIU it really ends up being a really awesome place to play outside, and it's actually what brought me back here, and it's what I love to share with everyone uh, as, as I get to do my job. It's a lot of fun. Um, today, we have a lot of exciting information for you. We have Britt here, uh, one of our students here at SIU. Say hi, Britt. Hi, everybody. I'm Britt. I'm a senior here at SIU. Yeah, so uh, in a moment, but not yet, uh, we're going to show you some exciting videos about SIU. Then we're going to come back to Britt. We're going to ask her about some of her experiences with SIU, why she came to SIU, and kind of give you that inside look. After that, I think Britt has to get off to a class, and then we're going to start to get into some of the nitty gritty. We'll talk about scholarships, and we'll talk about housing and all kinds of stuff like that. It's going to be great. But before we get into that, I'm going to go ahead and pull up our virtual tour, which is hosted by Brit, uh, which is perfect. One moment. Hi, welcome to SIU. We'll be giving you your virtual campus tour today. And look out for my other fellow tour guides, Riley, Alana, and Ryan here as well. Now I'm right and I'll start the tour. We normally start over here by undergraduate admissions, which is who will be assisting you on your journey to becoming a Saluki. Now come on, we'll continue the tour. All right guys, so here we are at one of my favorite spots on campus, um, Campus Lake. So behind me, you'll see Campus Lake, and then you'll see the residence halls across the way. That's Thompson Point, that is our West Campus residence halls. And that is one of the options for students to live on campus. So the Campus Lake will put a lot of fun events for students. So they'll have a thing called Light Up the Lake, which is the first week whenever students move in. And they have a lot of different stuff out here, like s'mores, dance floor, just stuff for students to get to know each other. 
You can also rent out kayaks, you can rent out canoes and actually go on the lake. And there is a 2.2 mile trail that goes all the way around it that you can either run or you can walk on. Um, a lot of really cool scenery. Now we're here in Old Maine, the most historic part of SIU's campus, back from back when we were just a small teaching school. Uh, the first building we have over on my side here is Anthony Hall, which houses all of our executive offices, like the chancellor, the vice chancellor, and the provost. After that, we have the Allen Building, which houses our School of Art and Design. The building straight behind me is Shryock Auditorium, uh, which houses all of our large ensembles on campus. And just outside of Shryock, we actually have a concert series that's held all through the summer that's free for everybody that wants to come in and attend. After that, we have Altgeld Hall, which houses our School of Music. And it's also a good place for students to get involved in ensembles and just have a place to practice. And now we're to one of the other main areas of campus. So right behind me, we have Morris Library, which holds learning support services for students, uh, as well as a writing center, which you can go to to get help on resumes and papers. Now on over, we have the Life Science Buildings, as well as Lindegren Hall, and those hold a lot of the anatomy, physiology, and biology classes on campus. And then Lindergren Hall also holds our physician's assistant program as well as the first year of our medical school. Now on over again, we have Lawson Hall, and that is our lecture hall building, which is not college specific. It only holds lecture halls, and I can guarantee that you'll have a class in there if you still have to take your general education classes. And then on over again, we have Wren Hall, which holds the College of Business. Our College of Business is in the top 5% in the country, and our accounting program is in the top 1%. So they're doing a lot of really great things over there. If you're a College of Business student, check them out. Then directly in front of me, we have WOM and Pulliam Hall, which together make up the College of Education and Human Services. And then they are connected by an industrial wing that has blacksmithing, glass blowing, and ceramics programs. And we are the only school in the entire country that has blacksmithing, bachelor's, and master's degrees. Hi right, guys, on this part of the tour, we'll be talking about the MassCom building. It's gonna house majors such as cinema and photography, journalism, and theater. Well, a really cool thing that's in the MassCom building is the Daily Egyptian, where students get to publish some of their works into a newspaper read by people around town and by people on campus. Um, the MassCom building was just awarded a grant too, so for renovations, uh, to revamp some of the programs, and just for a lot of new technological advances, um, that's going to be all in the MassCom building. As you can see, it's a bright and sunny day here on the north end of Old Main. We have our last two buildings, including Woody Hall, which houses Trio Support Services, Veteran Support Services, the Center for Net International Education, and if you're interested, and ever studying abroad, the study abroad office is also housed in Woody. We also have Quigley Hall, which houses architecture, fashion design, interior design, and human nutrition and dietetics. Most of these students actually have 24-hour access to, to this building to work on their projects, which is very nice. A little short distance down Grand Avenue here, we have the Student Rec Center, which is accessible to all students. We have a rock wall, Olympic size swimming pool, and various exercise cl classes that you can take, including much more. We also have the health center, which if you're feeling ill, is just a $10 fee at the door. For our last stop on the tour, we're gonna to take a look here at one of my favorite places on campus, Saluki Row. Saluki Row is home to the Banterra Center where both our men's and women's team, basketball teams play here on campus, as well as Saluki Stadium, which is home to our SIU football team. Students here on campus at SIU have the really awesome ability of being able to attend all the sporting events as included in their student fees. I think the ability to go and see these events and hang out with friends has made this experience really awesome for me as well. Don't just take it from me, take it from somebody who graduated and didn't have enough of SIU, so he came back. Current Saluki Hall of Fame men's basketball coach, Brian Mullins. What's up, future Salukis? This is Brian Mullins, the head men's basketball coach. And I just wanna tell you a couple reasons why I had such a great experience as a student athlete here, and now why I love it even more coming back as a coach. SIU is an incredible school, and what makes it so special is this community and the student population and how much they support SIU athletics, the football games, the basketball games, the volleyball games, the baseball games. It's a complete community support from top to bottom. And what makes it even more special is the dog pound and the student involvement and how much fun it is to go to the games. I'm telling you, there's nothing else like it in the Midwest. And I hope to see all you guys at future basketball games. Thank you so much for going on the virtual tour of campus with us today. We really hope you enjoyed it. For more information on how you too can become a Saluki, see the information below. Nice. Nice work on that, Britt. Really enjoyed it. Um, so 
as you all can see, SIU is a really fun place to go, go to school. Uh, as, as Britt showed us, uh, there's all kinds of fun opportunities. Um, and that's why we have her here today is we're going to ask her a little bit more about that. What brought her here and, and what makes it exciting for her uh, as a student. So first off, Britt, let's ask you, what motivated you to come to SIU? So actually, you know, uh, at one point in time, I was a senior in high school myself uh, doing the campus tour before I was giving them. Uh, and so on my campus tour, one, my tour guide was great. And she really showed me all the options I had here, um, including research. And as a pre-med student, that was huge for me um, because you can get involved in it as early as freshman year, which is totally unique to SIU um, because we do have re tier one research going on here too. So that's great research and you can get involved early. That was huge for me. And then also just coming on the tour, I mean, you got to see it on the video, how beautiful our campus is. Um, and Cody talked about it, the rest of Southern Illinois is also beautiful and you have it right here. Um, just this weekend, I went down to Inspiration Point hiking. So, you know, that was another big thing for me. That's just the area. And then it's gonna sound so cheesy, but just how nice everybody here is. Um, the Southern hospitality is not a lie. It's definitely a thing here. Um, in Carbondale, you know, it's a college town. It's, it's SIU. Uh, so, you know, you're getting that big community feel too. So those are just a couple of the reasons um, why I wanted to come here. Great. And I totally agree with all of that. You also mentioned you, you work, you, uh, you're giving tours to students as they come. You work in admissions. Uh, you are a student employee, right? I have a lot of questions coming in and asking about that. How is that process becoming a student employee? Do you enjoy it? What are some of the benefits? Oh yeah, absolutely. So for me, um, being a Saluki ambassador tour guide, it was kind of a segue into the student worker position here in admissions. Uh, and so it was really easy to find that job and also the student employment office. I know they've got a website with job listings um, and all my other friends who have student worker jobs, they said it was really easy to get one. Um, so the process is nice. And also it's so nice to have a student job because you're working, you know, in between classes. So, you know, pre-COVID times, you know, I would have a 9 a.m. class on campus, and then I'd come work in here from 10 to 1, and then I'd go to my 1 o'clock class, you know, so it's really nice to be able to work and, you know, get paid while you're already on campus, um, so you don't have to go, you know, far off campus to do that, so that's one of the reasons I really like, you know, student employment. Absolutely. Um, you said pre-COVID times. Um, talk a little bit more about that. What has it been like going from a student who experienced uh, university pre-COVID and now, how has your campus life changed? So it's obviously, you know, it's changed. Uh, as a senior, you know, it was nice because I already had, you know, my core group of friends and everything. So that was nice at least. Um, but, you know, switching to online classes, it has been something, <laughs> you know, it's been an experience, but it has been really easy. And one of the things that I do like about it has been um, a, you know, you can, you can get up and go to your 10 a.m., you know, five minutes after, you know, you get up, uh, but also you get those recorded lectures, which I think has been really nice um, and something that actually I hope they keep after COVID um, that a lot of my professors have said they will. And so, you know, instead of going into class and then if you didn't catch it, you know, you need to go to the professor's office hours actually, I can just go back in and rewatch the lecture. Um, so that's been nice. And I know our faculty here have been really good about that and listening to the students and what we prefer to happen. Um, and then student life, it's actually, you know, they still do events on campus. So they had um, like a light up the lake sort of thing where it was, you know, obviously socially distanced and, you know, people are required to wear masks but they still got students together to take paddle boats out on a campus lake, which you also got to see on the campus tour. Uh, so, you know, they've been doing little things like that. And from the freshmen, I've heard that they've been uh, still able to meet friends in a safe way um, and still get that, you know, college experience, the social aspect of it too. But yeah, it, de it definitely has been different, but it hasn't been um, so bad, so. That's, yeah, heard that. Um, speaking of which, uh, with that student life, um, light up the lake. Uh, what about clubs and stuff? What opportunities have you been able to take advantage of during your time here at SIU? I know you're a pretty involved person. What is, what is that like? Yeah, sure. So um, freshman year, I already talked about the research. Uh, I actually emailed a professor during my senior year um, when I knew I was going to come here about being in his research lab, uh, Dr. David Gilbert in the integrative neuroscience lab on campus. And uh, he you know, said he wanted to have me. So I started research um, my first, actually before my first week of class this year. 
So that was something that I was really involved in early on. Um, so looking ambassadors, so giving tours, have been involved in that since I first started campus. Um, it's actually, it's not a club, but it's technically a class, but marching Salukis, our marching band on campus. I know a lot of people are involved in marching band in high school, and it, you know, you may think that it's not something you can continue to do, but it totally is. Um, I actually joined junior year because I didn't think I had time to freshman and uh, sophomore years, and junior year was busier. I joined it then, though, and it it's so easy to make time for it still, especially here, uh, and it's so much fun. It's definitely one of my favorite activities going on cheering on the basketball and football teams and volleyball teams. Um, but those are just a couple of the things that I'm involved in, so. Yeah, is that, that's a lot of things. I mean, as far as just <laughs> other things, right? Is it, is it hard to manage your time? What does your typical day look like? Is it? So uh, my typical day, uh, under normal circumstances, it would be, you know, getting up, going to classes, um, working in between, like I said, you know, so maybe having a couple morning classes and then work and then some more. Uh, and then after that, you know, like marching band rehearsal, um, or maybe if we're in pet band, you know, basketball season, I'm going to a pet band game after that, uh, hitting some Starbucks, you know, going to the student rec center in between, you know, kind of those random things. And then uh, Saluki Ambassadors, you know, I give tours uh, a couple times a week too. So that's thrown in there. Pre, uh, like freshman year, I was still involved in research really heavily. So I was doing that every day too. Um, but it, it really is, you know, college is what you make it. So you can make your schedule really busy like that. Um, and it is manageable, manageable if it's things that you really want to do, you know, and that you're passionate about. So luckily enough, I found a lot of activities early on that I was passionate about. Um, and so it's just fun. You know, it is busy, but it's completely doable because um, I still have time to, you know, eat dinner with my roommates after and get some homework done. So and do you feel like you're able to get a lot of support through that or uh, what, what is that like as far as? using support services or that relationship with your professor as you're doing research or what, what's that kind of experience? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are so many services on campus that are there to support you. For instance, learning support services. Um, that's like the tutoring center on campus. I've definitely gone to get tutored before for classes, uh, you know, because it's not just for students who want to pass the classes too. It's for people who, you know, want to maintain that high A average. Uh, and so that's been a great resource. Like I said, I've gotten tutored for multiple classes through that and they're great. You know, it's one thing that when you get to college, you know, you can't be afraid to ask for help. And so I've definitely learned to do that. Um, whether it be through the learning support services or going to professors office hours, they've been great um, and very understanding. And one of my professors, who's also the um, head of the physiology department here, you know, he was like, you know, come to me, you know, we can, you know, get some extra practice questions down. And, you know, this textbook that I have, it's supplemental information. You know, if you feel like you're not understanding it from this resource, let me get you this resource. And so it's all been great. My honors mentor, David Milley, he's been awesome. Um, just friends, you know, that I've met around campus are great. And so there's tons of people to lean on for support and definitely um, you got to learn to not be afraid uh, to ask for that support. So. Yeah, that's great advice, I think. Um, and obviously, you, you've had a lot of success here at SIU. So I want you to go ahead and maybe think about this for a second. But what is some of your best advice that you could give a fresh or a high school student trying to choose a school as, as, they're, as they're trying to pick a school? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? It actually was a little bit, I think the Wi-Fi is going in and out a little bit. Yeah, so what is your best advice you could give to an incoming freshman? So my best advice would be to get involved um, as It looks like their um, internet froze a little bit, so we will wait for them to come on back. There they go.
Sorry about that. I think our, our Wi-Fi just went out for, for just a second. It's kind of storming outside. Are we are we back on though? Are we good? All right. Yes, All right. you're good. Yep, you're good. Okay. Um, go ahead and start that last question over, Britt. Uh, so what is your best advice that you can give to an incoming freshman who's considering SIU? Yeah, sure. So my best advice would definitely be to get involved. Um, you'll meet people that way, which I think is another huge part of college It's not, you know, obviously academics are number one when you go, but it's also a lot of socialization, meeting people, making connections. And so I think getting involved is absolutely the best way to do that. So, you know, go to the involvement fairs, like the club fairs and stuff at the beginning of the year, see what you're interested in. You also meet friends there even, you know, go to the dining hall with like the people that live down the hall, any way that you can meet people and make new connections, definitely, you know, say yes to those opportunities. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Britt. I know you have to get off to write a paper or change the world or something like that. Um, I think that all of your information and advice has been so valuable to hopefully a lot of students here from Indiana. Um, I'll let you get going, though, and we are going to move on to talking about some of the nitty gritty about SIU. Hi, Britt. All right. Thank you, Cody. Bye. All right. Let me get back to sharing my screen here, um, and we will start talking about SIU, one second. I can. Sorry about that. All right, we'll go ahead and present it in, in screen share mode. I hope that's all right with you all. But starting out with SIU, uh, as Britt was talking about, I mean, really think about that. She was able to get research experience in her freshman year. And what that means is, um, as SIU is a major research institution, but we only have 10,000 students, that puts our faculty to student ratio at it says 13 to one here, but we're actually at 12 to one right now, which means that your opportunities to get in touch with your professors are immense. Um, and so what Britt was able to do her freshman year, as, you, as, as she had mentioned, she was able to contact her professor, get in touch with her, find out what he was studying, what he was researching, and, and find out how she could help in some of that research. Um, that way, coming out of her freshman year, she had the potential of actually being published in some sort of scholarly academic journal, which is huge. On top of that, that 12 to one student to faculty ratio gives you immense opportunities for, for support, um, for that relationship that is going to make you really feel like your place here at SIU matters, um, which it really just does. And I think that's why for a lot of people, they find home here at SIU. On top of that, as Britt was talking about a little bit, um, this is Carbondale. This is a really fun place to go to school. As you see in the background of this photo, um, you can see the, the sunset concerts as they had mentioned in the, uh, in the virtual tour. But it really is a place where we try to make it feel home for everybody, right? And so in those sunset concerts, you see people from all walks of life from all over Southern Illinois, not just the university, but also the city of Carbondale, Murfreesboro, Marion, Heron, everybody comes and kind of enjoys these things together. On top of that, we're surrounded by the Shawnee National Forest. And so if you're into the outdoors, or even if you haven't found the outdoors yet, you will find them here just because there are so many opportunities. I mean. Um, surrounding campus, we have, have over 500 miles of trail. We have six lakes within 30 minutes of campus. Um, we have world-class sandstone rock climbing, and we're actually in the process, we just built 10 miles of uh, International Mountain Bike Association uh, built mountain bike trails here on campus at our environmental center, which is Touch of Nature, which is really cool. And they're really fun. I, got, I just got the opportunity to ride them this weekend. So really cool stuff there. Um, on top of that, um, speaking of concerts and, and things to do, there's all sorts of, <laughs> sorry, um, there's all sorts of uh, different restaurants and little quirks that make Carbondale a really fun town to kind of explore and, and find things to do. Um, 
here at SIU, we also want to make sure that you have the things that you need. We're a comprehensive university, which means we really do have a little bit of everything. Uh, our, recreation, our recreation center is awesome. We've got an Olympic sized pool. We've got really everything you need if you want. This is also where a lot of our clubs are going to take place at, as we have over 300 student organizations. Um, the rec center is definitely the focal point of a lot of students uh, experience here at SIU. Uh, and that's actually connected to our health student service building. Um, so how that works, and they spoke a little bit about it in the virtual tour, but I do want to point out that really everything that you need, if you need x-rays, if you have a broken arm or something, I actually just had a separated AC joint the other day from mountain biking, but um, I was able to go in there. I gave them $10 and they, they gave me an x-ray and kind of make sure I felt good about all those, but everything from mental to physical health, they are going to be able to take care of that. And that's actually a $10 service charge, including with your uh, student health, or health insurance, which is a really great deal. Um, a lot of students will ask me about, uh, you know, when they're coming in as a freshman, if they're able to have a car. And yes, you're able to have a car on campus. Um, you just have to buy a parking sticker, uh, but there are a lot of opportunities outside of driving through Carbondale. And I would argue that maybe one of the best ways to get around Carbondale is by a bike. Um, they've put in all sorts of different bike lanes and, and things like that. They've made it a really safe place to ride bikes. On top of that, we also have our, our Saluki Express, which is the bus service that gets you all around town. Um, and we even have Saluki Stokes, Saluki Spokes, which allows you to fix your bike for free. Um, and they'll even teach you how to do it, which is awesome. Um, as far as university housing goes, we have two options. We have the towers, which is May Smith, Neely, and Schneider Hall, and those are 17 floor buildings. Um, and typically a lot of students from larger cities, people who are used to being around a lot of people really enjoy the towers for that. And then we also have Thompson Point, which sits around our lake, which is right on campus. I'm gonna go ahead and show you another video that kind of showcases those, um, those options. University housing at Southern Illinois University consists of two residential areas, East Campus and West Campus. East Campus is home to our three towers, May Smith, Neely, and Schneider, while West Campus has 11 smaller residence halls located near Campus Lake. Both sides of campus feature the same suite style layout of rooms, and currently each student is able to have their own room. Rooms come fully furnished and beds on both sides of campus are loftable. Each student shares a bathroom with their suite mate, but has their own sink and mirror located inside their room. East Campus features a large common lobby and kitchen, while West Campus has a long commons area that runs the length of the building connecting all rooms. For those students that qualify, Wall and Grand on-campus apartments are also an option. University housing has two dining hall areas and caters to all diets and allergy types. A dedicated health and nutrition team will help guide you through eating better and help guide you through allergy restrictions. East Campus features a new Mongolian style grill that was built this past fall and features proteins, noodles, veggies, and house-made sauces cooked daily on our 500 degree flat top grill. To learn more about university housing, visit housing.siu.edu. Yeah, so our, our housing opportunities right now are really a really great thing to consider. So this shows our slides are going a little bit slower. No, there you go. Um, so along with that, um, I really want to point out that one part where she said all students at SIU right now have the opportunity to have their own room, which means you don't have a roommate. You do have a suite mate though, um, and you will just share that uh, one bathroom that connects those two rooms. Um, but that's also nice that you don't have communal showers and you don't have communal bathrooms. So really an awesome opportunity there. Um, and as, as she spoke about the dining, we do have an anytime meal plan, which allows you to go uh, an unlimited amount of times a week to our, our, uh, our dining halls. 
as opposed to having like a block 15 meal plan where you only have 15 meals for the week and you have to kind of budget those. Um, you get to essentially eat whenever you want as many times as you want. Uh, and then we are able to account for all sorts of different dietary needs or requests. And um, we have the, the grill at True Blood, which involves that uh, the Mongolian grill. It's absolutely delicious. Pre-COVID, I was going there pretty frequently to get my lunch. Um, now it's just closed to students. So um, it is absolutely awesome. I spoke to clubs a little bit. I'm not gonna talk too much about that. We have all sorts of different opportunities. If you're interested in study abroad, we, we have opportunities to all seven continents that you can get in on. Uh, we have an honors program that's gonna allow you to get on some um, kind of exclusive classes that are maybe a little bit more fun, maybe a little bit different than the normal curriculum. We have the Career Development Center, which is a really awesome opportunity as far as getting a job after college. We'll do everything from mock interviews to actually giving you clothes for interviews um, to just finding interviews, all sorts of things like that. Uh, the Student Multicultural Resource Center is also going to be a great tool um, to help really anyone on campus help you make this feel like it is your home, that you're accepted. And that's something that we really believe in here at SIU. Um, as far as tuition goes, um, I do want to point out as Indiana students, you will receive in-state tuition here at SIU. On top of that, I'm about to talk about what the tuition costs and everything, but 90% of our students here at SIU receive some sort of financial assistance. Um, and then there's all sorts of different rates um, that we could talk about. If you are more interested, I'd love to have that conversation with you. But basically what it looks like is our tuition here at SAU sits around $9,500. And that assumes that you're sitting at 15 credit hours a semester for two semesters, all right? If you take more classes, it's gonna cost a little more. If you take less, it's gonna cost a little bit less. Uh, our fees are broken down to $5,000 and that's including um, really, uh, really everything from sporting events to the library, to the rec center, all sorts of things like that. Also assumes that you are using the student health insurance plan. So if you wanted to opt out of that and use your, your parents' health insurance, you can do that and that would knock about $1,000 off of that. Room and board also sits about $10,000. Um, and you only have to live on campus for your freshman year, unless your parents live or if you have family within 60 miles of campus. Um, otherwise, your freshman year, you are living on campus and you can actually do that all four years if you would like to. And so, uh, as I mentioned though, 90% uh, of our students do not pay this number. This is just an estimated budget. Um, so what I wanna talk about now is our general scholarships. So we have over 600 scholarships across campus that our students have access to. So once you're admitted to the university, you will fill out your general scholarship application and you, it'll automatically apply you to all 600 of those scholarships and we will let you know which ones you qualify for. Then you'll go back and follow up with those, you find out which scholarships you qualify for, you'll maybe write a paper or really do whatever is asked of that scholarship following that. We also have merit-based scholarships. And this year we have moved to test optional for our merit-based scholarships. That means you don't need to take your SAT or ACT in order to get our freshman scholarship merit-based scholarships, right? So if you have above a 2.75, we're automatically going to give you a $6,000 scholarship or $1,500 a year. If you have a 3.0 to a 3.5 or a 3.49, actually, uh, we're automatically going to give you $2,500 a year or a $10,000 scholarship. 3.5 to a 3.79 is automatically $3,500 a year for four years or a $14,000 scholarship. If you're sitting above a 3.79, if you have a 3.8 or above, we're automatically gonna give you $7,500 a year for four years, uh, which is a $30,000 scholarship if you apply early. So if you're admitted by November 30th, uh, you will get that scholarship if you apply or admitted uh, after November 30th, it's gonna fall down to a $22,000 scholarship or $5,500. If you're sitting at that Saluki gold level, so if you have a 3.5 to a 3.79 and don't qualify for the university excellence at the normal 3.8, you can go ahead and submit your test scores. And if you have above a 28 or a 1310 on the SAT, 
uh, we'll go ahead and bump you up into the University Excellence, which actually puts you in the running for the Chancellor Scholarship, which is a $102,000 scholarship. It's a full ride, covers tuition, fees, room and board for four years, um, allows you to live on campus all four years, so you don't have to worry about rent or food or really anything. Uh, the one thing with that, it is competitive, so you would have to come down to campus, speak to yourself, why you believe in community, maybe leadership opportunities uh, that you've had in the past, and, and kind of why you think that you maybe deserve this scholarship. And so we're giving about 30 of those out this year. Lots of great opportunities there. Um, as far as that goes, though, uh, I really recommend as far as um, this month, the month of October, uh, scholarships are free. So get go to siu.edu, fill out a scholarship. That way you don't have to spend that $40 application fee. Um, send us your official transcripts or have your uh, guidance counselor from your high school send them, or you can do it through parchment.com. And if you have them, I recommend go ahead and send your SAT or ACT scores, because even though you don't need them for to get into the school, if you have a 2.75 unweighted GPA on a four point scale, you automatically be admitted. Um, but it will allow you to apply for some of those scholarships that are in the general scholarship application that are not merit based. So all of those things I recommend you send on over to us. With that being said, though, that's about all I have um, for you today. I recommend follow us on all of our social media platforms, really Facebook, um, Instagram, and Twitter is where we're most active. That is where you're going to stay up to date the most. Um, and I really recommend come on down to campus, walk around, see our forests, see our buildings, talk to your admissions coordinator, which will be me, um, and, and just see if this place feels like home. I think that's my best advice. As Britt gave her advice earlier, my advice is go to as many campuses as you can and see which place feels like home, and that's usually the right place for you. With that being said, um, I'm about out of information. I'm going to go ahead and hand this back over to you. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, I am going to share my screen again real quick and wrap us up for the evening. So thank you all so much for joining us. There is a quick survey when you close out of, the, of our presentation today. It's four questions, feel free please to complete that. Um, once again, you can sign up for more sessions available online. Um, at inacac.org forward slash virtual dash college dash exploration. Um, a recording of this presentation will be available to everyone who was not able to um, enjoy. For those who are here, there will be recordings of all of our sessions available online as well. So please tell all your friends to check out SIU's presentation later on if they missed it. We would love for you all to watch that. Once again, though, everyone, thank you all for joining us and have a great evening. Cody, you have a great evening as well. You have a great evening too. See ya. Bye.